Okay, good. So uh, this is the VLAN management. Um, now, VLAN management comes with, with NIOS. So if you're an existing NIOS customer, you just buy this straight up, you know, IPAM, DDI. Uh, this comes with it. Um, and you're going to see an additional tab uh, called VLAN. So under data management, where you typically see, you know, IPAM, Superhost, which was added in 8.3, devices if you have the discovery, that sort of thing, you've got a VLAN tab now. Uh, and these are broken out into uh, views, ranges, and and individual VLAN objects. So over here, for instance, if I was to add a VLAN view, you're simply giving it a name, you're giving it a start and end ID, right, just numbers uh, for you to track. You can actually cre pre-create the VLAN objects uh, in the view uh, at VLAN view creation time, and you can give them a VLAN name prefix. So if we go and create you know, 2,000 VLAN objects in a single shot, and you wanted them all to begin with demo or, you know, engineering lab or something like that. They could always be given that prefix before uh, before the number. You're also allowed to uh, have uh, overlapping VLAN ranges. So if, if you're managing your ranges for different resources, if you can't plan it exactly on how many VLAN you're going to give to this department versus this department, you can it allows you to overlap and bleed into them. And you can give a comment to the to the to the view as well. Um, within VLAN views, you can also create VLAN ranges. So this is very similar to the same types of things that we're querying for. But now you, you're basically just selecting which view you want that 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 range to go in, right? And then um, you can also uh, create individual VLAN IDs where you're choosing a view or a VLAN range for it to go in. You're giving it a name. You're giving it an ID. Uh, you can also, once you've chosen a view or a range, choose just get the next available one. So if I had created, for instance, a range from from one to 100, and I had only defined a VLANs below that to 50, and I said get next, it would automatically drop 51 in there for you. Um, you can reserve these, and then they will not appear when a user goes to assign them to a subnet, right? But you will still see it, um, or they'll see it, but it'll be marked as reserved. And then these are fields, you know, we pulled the customer base on these and said, what are common things that you track with VLANs? And so you can assign a description, a contact, a department comment, and then you can also add all of your own extensible attributes to those as well, all right? So once you've uh, set that up, uh, for instance, I can drill into a particular view here, uh, and then you can see the way that this one is, um, is, is set up is that these VLANs are within that view, right? But here's a VLAN range that is uh, that is within that view. So uh, a VLAN doesn't have to be in a range, right? It can just be uh, in, a, in a particular view. And if I drill into that, you can see, for instance, that um, that this uh, VLAN here has been assigned to that that particular subnet. Okay. Um, so uh, let me go back out to here. Oh, I wanted to show this. Um, this one's been assigned to multiple uh, VLANs. So we don't restrict you. You can assign uh, multiple VLANs to a subnet, although I know that could be considered a network configuration, or you can assign multiple subnets to a VLAN as well. All right. So um, let's now go out to show you something else here. If I go into um, default and default range, you can see here another good uh, good display of it, right? So these are the subnets that are assigned. Here's our examples, for instance, of um, of using extensible attributes. So I've ex created an extensible attribute called VLAN type that I can override to that as well. And if I wanted to edit this VLAN, I could come in here, and within here you would see the range, uh, its name, its ID, right? You could add description contact department. You can see which network or networks it's assigned to. I could go over to extensible attributes and see and assign those values also, right? So all this area under VLANs is basically the management of creating those VLANs and, 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 and defining which range they're in, which view they're in, that sort of thing. Now, if I go over to um, IPAM, right? Now what you're gonna see here is, um, is the, here's an example, where we have um, the subnets and across the top, now, uh, as of 8.3, we used to have VLAN ID, VLAN name, which was basically just the one that we discovered. But we've changed those, and so now we, what we have here is discovered VLAN ID, discovered VLAN name, and assigned VLAN ID, assigned VLAN name. 
Uh, and so um, basically now you can make sure that they're the same. Um, one is assignment and one is actually discovered. Now we're only going to discover if you have the network insight or NetMRI discovery engines, right? So VLAN management is still very useful if you don't have discovery, but there is a, an additional benefit if you do have it, all right? Uh, and so, for instance, if I, uh, I don't know, here, let me go into one of these and I'll edit it. And when you go into edit the subnet, there's a new VLAN assignment menu option. And let's just say I wanted to get rid of that for a second. I'm taking that assignment away. Right, so that one is cleared out, right? And then if I wanted to do a reassignment, it's just the opposite, but then you can you can choose uh, views uh, and uh, and uh, and the ranges to, to make that choice. So yeah, I'm adding one. Okay, I'm going into the choosing a particular view. Right, and then I can select an individual VLAN to assign to it. Add that. And notice the other thing you can do here, which is nice, is uh, there it was saved, um, is that I could have done get next there as well. So again, even if you don't have a specific one to assign in that VLAN assignment, get next is a possibility. And then we'll just get the next one that's available. And that can be very handy, particularly if you're using automation, because all of these, if you were to make an API call, you're going to, uh, in an automated fashion, using an Ansible playbook or something like that, define a new subnet, new network, and you want to go grab the next available VLAN, that is available via the API as well. Okay? Um, so, again, uh, if I go up to, um, to show you some examples of what these differences may look like, Here's some good examples again. So you're seeing um, if it's yellow, that means that we've discovered it, but um, you haven't done an assignment yet. If it's white, that means it's discovered and you did an assignment. And then you can see in some cases where there are differences. Now, you don't have to just eyeball these for differences, right? We have some out-of-the-box uh, reports that help you, uh, help you determine that. So, for instance, if I go over to uh, reporting, um, we use uh, a Splunk engine for our uh, reporting and analytics tool, right? I'm going to come in here to dashboards, and there's two out-of-the-box reports that we include with VLAN management. And one of them is a VLAN inventory. Uh, these dashboards generally have some default filters up top that you can tweak. I'm going to change this to an hour ago. Submit it. And this is basically just a report of inventory of all the VLANs that you have uh, defined in the system, along with these fields, which you can all filter on. You can see it's displaying uh, what it's assigned to, description, comment, contact department, whether it's assigned or not, the range and the view that it's in. Um, but uh, here's the report that's pretty nice. Well, that one's nice, too, but this one's particularly slick when you're trying to figure out where your conflicts are. I spell it right. In a conflict report. Okay, I'm going to change this to the last hour. All right, so what this is doing is showing you all the conflicts between your assigned VLANs and the ones that we've discovered on the network, and it's giving you the conflict reason over here as well. So, for instance, these that come off right off the bat. These are VLANs that we have discovered on the network in these subnets that you have not done an assignment for. So it's just differences in your in your IPAM view versus versus what's out there. But you can also choose a conflict reason. I could say, all right, well, let me show the ones that aren't discovered but that we did assign. So here's assignments that they haven't been seen on the network, right? Here are uh, name conflicts, meaning that uh, these numbers are correct but we um, wanted to make the assigned name this, and this is what was actually deployed when Network Ops put it on the network, right? So the whole purpose of that report is not just to um, uh, show you that you're, you're, it's basically just to show you the difference between the actual network and what's, um, what's on the, um, and, and how you have it uh, assigned, all right? 
Well, within that, that's why I'm going to demo for the VLAN management area. That's that's the gist of it. This was hit really hard during control availability, but it is a, a, a significant new feature in 8.4 that I wanted to show you. Um, you can also see through that whole thing that if you're a current customer, that uh, the UI looks looks a little different, but that the navigation didn't change too much. So uh, follow it. So just to kind of finish up, thank you. We run our hour. We appreciate everyone's attendance um, and uh, look forward to seeing you on our next webinar. So uh, take care and uh, we'll see you later.